Matt. Hi, hi, Karina. I'm hi. from the Iris. Hello. Um, so we're here to talk to you today about The Other Guy, which is your new TV series. And um, so from the trailer, it's a bit of a rom-com and a bit about dating and getting back into relationships and, you know, I guess get you guys to give us a bit more of a about the show and your characters. Yeah, I think um, when we were developing it, we kind of kept thinking about it as a rom-com, but 10 years later, yeah. you know, so this is actually, this is like... 10 years after the young couple have met romantically under the tree at university or whatever, and this is where shit's gone down. Um, and I guess it's like, a, it's like what happens in a real relationship. It's past the point of comfortability. It's, it's where, you, where two people who do love each other are actually really faced to, to figure out whether they can actually still be together or not, which I think is what... I mean, everyone's gone through those situations in yeah. relationships, especially within the, you know, by their thirties. It's like the end of a rom com, but not a happy ending. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then the kind of aftermath of that, and then it rolls more into a buddy comedy, especially the first few episodes, because I play AJ's best friend Stevie, and we're not romantically connected, and so we just have fun together. <laughs> Yeah, which is kind of, it's a really, it's a fun thing to have as part of your show. And it's, it's unfortunately kind of unique yeah. um, because there's usually some kind of, I don't know, romance yeah. driving a friendship. Or sexual agenda. Yeah, yeah, exactly. What I'd like to touch on is like that notion of portraying some of these, you know, relationships that you don't see like on TV very much. So like, you know, this platonic relationship between mm -hmm. the two of them and then, you know, you've got like this awkward situation between you and your girlfriend but then she's slept with your best mate mm. who's also your housemate. So like this whole like really extra complicated like relationship that's going on. Yeah. Is that something that you really wanted to you know, have portrayed like in the show. Definitely. I just wanted to I just wanted to have it portrayed honestly. There was a few moments where it would have been a lot easier to um have my character get super angry at his um at Liv, you know, his ex girlfriend, or to try and fight the guy or or whatever. That that just would have that's what people think happens when a big dramatic um event unfolds your relationship like this. But I don't know, there's a lot, you know, and so I can't speak for everyone who's been through similar things, but there's a lot more numbness that happens. Mm. There's a lot more, um, you know, you, you, you're like, I, I really like that AJ is, is scared to see the other guy, you know, he's like, he, he, he it's the last thing he wants is a confrontation. That's, he's absolutely terrified of it. Mm. And, um, and that kind of just haunts him no matter where he is or where he goes. It's always wor He's always worried about seeing the other guy and yeah, and all those sort of things, you know. So um, I, I really, I really wanted to communicate that within the, within the show that it's not it's not what you think, you know. Life doesn't work out like that. Yeah, that's so true. Yeah, you don't see that a great deal. You see kind of explosive yeah reactions to infidelity and explosive, uh, you know, whether it's at your partner, your ex-partner or the person they were with. But I remember uh, an ex-boyfriend of mine was with somebody else and I thought for a second that she was at the gym that I went to and I was panicking. Every time I went to that gym, I was looking over my shoulder. I didn't, yeah. I didn't want to see her. No, exactly. That's the thing. It's not, you think people are like, oh, yeah, if, you, if you run into them, you're going to like fight them or anything like that. It's like, it's no. It's dreadful. Yeah. <laughs> I thought if I saw, yeah. Yeah, I thought if I saw her, I would, my whole, I would die. <laughs> like I, I would spontaneously combust and I would cease totally. to exist. Yeah. That's why AJ and Stevie are such good friends in this as well, because you see her kind of be, Sort of knowing that, you know, mm. she's 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 always knowing. She's always like, you know, in the very first episode, they go out to go to the pub, and then you know, he has to ask her to go inside yeah. to check whether <laughs> the, the other guy's there yeah. and all those sort of things. And that because that's what happens. Yeah. That's what really happens, you know. Yeah. 
I noticed you've got some really cool uh, castmates. Um, so you've got uh, Michael Keaton, who's playing your kind of local likable dorky radio co-host. Mm -hmm. um, and you've also got uh, Briggs, who's actually going to be coming in and playing, like, your nemesis. Oh, guess, my or, God. Like, a dude who's going to bully you. Oh, <laughs> who's going to bully me? <laughs> oh, yeah, Try does bully me regularly. Briggs, what are you doing, mate? Some of the things, he's, he's making fun of my acting, he's making fun of my hair, he's making fun of a cooking show that I'm doing at the moment. I'm like, your character's, it's stopped, mate. We're filming, it's done. <laughs> it's, it's killer. Uh, so, I guess, was it... Was it really important to you to have that uh, casting reflected and the diversity reflected on screen? Because, like, we in Australia, we have a lot of, like, really multicultural people in our lives. Mm. So, you know, was that important for you to get portrayed on screen as well, to have, like, these people of different backgrounds and nationalities? Yeah, um, it was. Surprisingly, though, it's not something we necessarily set out to do. It's yeah. everyone really just fit into their into their characters really well, you know. Briggs is that person who I've always had those online back and forths with. And I never am, and I, I always just imagine him to be that to be that person. Um really early on from the get go, Michael Hing was someone who we thought would be a good a good Sam. Um and even like Amali Golden, she's half British Sri Lankan. Um she just came in and was and, and she plays a character called Amy Wade, a musician and uh, she, I don't know, just brought this really cool, laid-back version of the of the character that we'd written, and it just and it just fit. But yeah. that said, when we look at the when I look at you know walked into the production office and looked at the cast members, you know, on the wall and all their headshots and stuff like that, I was, was United Nations. Well, <laughs> <laughs> but I was really proud of that. You know what I mean? Because That's growing great. up, I didn't see that kind of cast on TV, That's and it means a lot to be. To be, to, you know, when you're younger and you're watching these shows, to see a character who is, um, or a cast is culturally diverse, but not because they're all trying to sneak into the country via sea patrol or whatever, or not because it's, you know, rammed down your throat as this big political, socio, uh, socio political drama. It's just because this is Australia and this is what some Australia looks like and you know yeah yeah and just to kind of wrap things up so what do you guys want people to I guess take away from this besides the you know it's that awkward rom-com set 10 years after the actual happy ending oh, I would like people to know that Harriet Dyer is top of the game at the moment in Australia oh, <laughs> she is you heard it here first <laughs> Harriet Dyer is the best actress in Australia oh, she is. Um, <laughs> And I think that Stevie is one of the best characters that um, people will have seen on Australian TV for a very long time. And that is all thanks to Harriet Dyer and, um, and also Becky Lucas for some incredible writing. And yeah. So there you go. You heard it from me first. You got the scoop. Stop it. I'm embarrassed. Harriet's all blushing. Yeah. Um, I, think, I think if people... We just want to get eyes on Stan and eyes on the other guy because... If people watch it, then it encourages more stories like this to be told, more imperfect stories that are dramedies that have a bit for everyone and and casts like this, like you said. I think just just clapping eyes on it and enjoying it would be all that I could ask for. Mm. Yeah.